Thanks again to everybody who's added, uh, who's answered these yellow questions in the chat. Again, if you're just hopping on, if you don't mind, before we get started, just answer in the chat. Uh, where do you teach? What subject do you teach? And if you've used positive physics or chemistry before. Awesome. And we got some people who haven't used it before and some names that I recognize that have used, uh, used the site for, for a while. All right. Cool. Okay. This is helpful. And uh, yeah, thank you everyone um, again for joining and for putting that stuff in the chat. Um, I'm Jack. I initially created positive physics out of my classroom in Memphis. And this is Abby. Abby, will you say hi? Hi, everyone. I'm um, Abby. <laughs> and Abby was actually using positive physics in her classroom um, and reached out to me about creating content for us. And now she works on this and she has completely revamped the chemistry side. Um, and so I'll show a little bit about like the general information about the site and kind of how it looks to students and talk a little bit about the physics side. And then Abby will show some of the chemistry side and we'll leave uh, lots of time to uh, for questions later. Um, but first I wrote down a few things that I always want, always forget um, so the first one is please uh, ask questions anytime. We have a fairly small group today, so feel free if you're if you're brave to unmute yourself and just ask a question, or if you want to put your question in the chat, um, either Abby and I will be looking at the chat the whole time. Um, one quick thing that's new this year is you can now use positivephysics.org, positivechemistry.org, and positivestem.org interchangeably. So you could log in on positive physics one day and do some problems and look at your students work, log in on positive chemistry the next day, and your information will, will be in all three places. It connects to the same database. Um, we used to have chemistry students using positive physics and they felt like it was biased against them, but it's not. So you can use any of those three URLs. They all connect to the same place. Um, I built this out in my classroom and I wanted to help as many students as possible. There is a subscription required for like full access, um, but there's tons of free stuff. And if you're a teacher and you ask your school to pay and they can't for whatever reason, you get to decide the price that you pay because really like I, we, we want this to help as many people as possible. I wish I could give it to everyone for free, but we got to figure out a way to, to, keep it, to keep it going. And then lastly, um, I'm always available to help. My email is jack at positivephysics.org. And I try to get back to people um, super quickly. Um, so with that, yeah, I want to, um, I'll go ahead and share my screen and show you a little bit of the general functionality of the site and on the physics and talk a little bit about the physics side. And then Abby will take over and um, talk about the chemistry. And once again, if you have questions anytime, feel free to put them in the chat or even uh, unmute yourself and, and ask. So yeah, when a teacher creates an account on positive physics, they land on the dashboard. This is really similar to what a student would see, with the only difference is that on the right-hand side, you have these buttons where you could assign a due date, you could remove a lesson that you don't want your students to do. Obviously, students don't have access to that, but they'll see these same blue buttons that say lessons and questions. They'll see a completion and accuracy scores. So it's basically like a kind of you have a sample student account built into your teacher account. Um, you can click right here to see all of the courses that we offer. So we have physics, we have two chemistry courses. The one you wanna look at this year is the, the revamped 2023, 2024 chemistry course. And we have some beta courses for in, uh, engineering, environmental science, physical science, and you can actually create your own. I'll show you that at the, um, at the very end. Then we have this unit menu. So for physics, this is, we we're originally based it on kind of the fundamentals of AP Physics 1, but we've added more since then, and it now includes all the fundamentals you'd see on AP Physics 1 and AP Physics 2, basically anything you could want to do in an intro to physics class. There are now 31 units. Um, when I was teaching this, I'd probably get through between 20 and 25 of those units. So don't feel like if you decide to use this, don't feel like there's pressure to get through everything. Generally, people do about the first 14 units, and then they pick and choose five to 10 of the remaining units to do with your students. 
I'll talk a little bit more about these three different modes in just a second. But uh, first, I want to show you the uh, the student experience. Um, so generally, like we work our way down the dashboard. Every unit starts with a review and then has an inquiry activity, usually with like a simulation where students don't need the equations. They're just kind of looking for patterns. And then they dive into the learning pieces. I really tried to break things down into bite-sized pieces. I taught in a, a inner city Title I school and found that teaching these kind of building block concepts really helps students out. So one of those is, and here I'll show you an example lesson, is this free by diagram analysis skill. So this is before students are doing traditional problems. It's just working on them, making sure they know what net force means and kind of how to analyze a free by diagram. So every one of those lessons and questions, it starts with a, a video and then some just notes written in a really student friendly way. There's a reference sheet with all the equations on it. And then students can dive into the questions by clicking here or here. So again, this is a like broken down problem where students are just practicing, like understanding what net force means. And I even use this like with my AP students, because a lot of times I think that we uh, assume they have the fundamentals, but in reality, like sometimes they need a little bit more practice on those. A lot of teachers use this at home and then do like the AP classroom stuff in their classroom. Um, anything that you see in blue, so all of these numbers that are in kind of that darker blue are randomized. So if two students are sitting next to each other, they'll get the, even if they're looking at the same problem, it'll have different numbers. And it's really cool how it changes the conversation from how do I do this? Uh, or from what's the answer to they have to start talking about techniques for how to solve the problem. And then as students practice, um, when they click check answers or hit enter, right answers turn green and wrong answers, turn, uh, well, they don't turn red anymore. They actually just add this little red X in the upper left-hand corner, but they can be fixed. And you'll notice in the upper right-hand corner, we keep track of a completion score. That means it doesn't matter how many tries it took as long as they got it right eventually. And then an accuracy score. And that only goes up if uh, students get something right on the first try. All right. Um, students can then click next question or they can skip ahead if they get stuck on a question. And this will give them tons of practice with this particular skill before they get into going farther down the dashboard and getting into more traditional like complete problems where this is kind of combining all of the skills that they need uh, that they learned before to solve uh, kind of more traditional problems. Once again, anything that's in blue is randomized. So the answers are different for, uh, for different students. Um, but yeah, so that is a, just a, a whirlwind tour of the, of like the, the student side and a little bit about just what's included in the physics curriculum. But let me pause right there to see if anybody had any questions so far. Cool. Well, uh, oh, we got one in the chat. Is there a way to show work? Good question. So what I had students do is we have this teacher feature up here. And by the way, I won't go over every single uh, every single feature. So please do ask things like that um, um, as they come up. So you can go to teacher and print problems. So what I generally did was I had students turn in. Let me go to the same unit that I was on. So it's the forces unit. And then generally I would print out like some that first skill I showed you, students probably didn't need to show work on, but anything like complete problems and challenge and review, they probably do need to, or I'd, I'd want them to. So we have a print problems feature that'll create a PDF for you. And you'll notice, um, so I would just print this out for all of my students. And when it comes up, sometimes it's slow, especially if I'm on Zoom. If you can see it's really small, but right there, every um, every time a student would have a randomized value, there's a blank right there. And so I'd have students, they'd be working on the computer, they'd be entering their answers on the computer, but they'd be showing their work on paper because I still think that's important. And then I always just made like a unit due every week and a half or two weeks. And then at the end, they would turn that in. I give them a grade for that they got off the computer. And then I'd also just give them a grade, I'd skim their work and just make sure they were showing work and give them a grade for, for that as well. 
Oh, I'm glad you like it, Rosa. Um, cool. Any other questions on that so far before I turn it over to Abby to talk a little bit about the updated chemistry? All right, um, Abby, let me stop sharing my screen and you can take over. Perfect. Okay, let me just share my screen. Okay, so um, as Jack mentioned earlier, I'm now log right now I'm logged into positivechemistry.org, but again, you could access this from positive physics or positive STEM as well. Um, so the chemistry course, this new one, chemistry 2022 to sorry 2023 to 2024, that's our new course, um, and there's right now up to 42 units listed here. Um, this follows the AP chemistry order. Um, however, th the idea of the website in both the physics and the chemistry is to have like a low floor and a high ceiling. So we cover all of the AP content, but we also break it down so that on level or below level teachers can also use it with their students, as well as meeting the challenge level of AP chemistry or physics. Um, and right now, everything for semester one, so up to unit 19, is totally ready to go, ready for you to use with videos, lessons, questions, and everything. After that, units 20 onwards, those are still in progress. If you click on any of those, you'll be able to see one question of each type, um, so you can kind of check it out, but they're still being made. So those are coming soon, but hopefully you've got enough to get you going in the uh, first semester of units. Um, so I'll just show you a little example. So let's have a look at the balancing equations unit. So in this unit, um, we've broken down the balancing equations uh, concept into a bunch of different skills. And I'll just show you an example. So here we started out by analyzing, once it loads, uh, visual equations. So uh, again, we have a video. Abby, okay. can, I, can I jump in real quick? Yeah. Um, Corey was asking when the remaining chem units will be completed. And I'll just, I, I I can take that one, I think, but you can add on to it if you want. They will be completed well in advance of semester two. So the goal was to have everything for semester one done well before the start of the school year. And then all of the semester two's things will be done well in advance of when you will need them. Thanks so much, Jack. Um, yeah, so again, everything starts with a video and a little lesson. Um, and then for the questions, we have uh, every question with some randomization as well. So here you can see the, the elements, uh, nitrogen and hydrogen. Those are blue. That's showing those are chosen from a random selection of options. Um, and here the image is randomized as well. So to start with these skills, uh, they're based on showing an equation and students having to count up how many of each we have and deciding yeah. if they're balanced. Was there a question? Oh, okay, sorry, I thought I had someone say something. Um, and then as we go through, it goes from analyzing them to students balancing the equations themselves. So here students will fill in to balance the equations. And again, they have to count how many do we have in the reactants and the products to kind of show their work for how they got to their answer. Um, and again, in blue, you can see those are randomized uh, equations. So the answers will be randomized for each student. And then, so that's kind of showing the kind of lower end and the, the kind of regular end. And then we go all the way up to questions at the end where students are having to, here they're given the names of the compounds and they have to first figure out the formulas of each compound, then balance it. And again, show their work in the same way. So this kind of gives you an idea of how we've taken a concept from the AP curriculum, and then we've broken it down for below level, on level, and all the way up to kind of a, a higher level of challenge. Um, yeah, so that gives a little overview of what you might see in the chemistry. Um, yeah. Gotcha. Jack? Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Abby. And we had a question in the chat, actually, on the physics side, so perfect uh, transition Great. to me. Um, McWilliams said, are the physics questions on par with AP classroom problems or just helpful for the simple math concepts? Let me uh, sh go back to sharing my screen real quick. So yeah, gr uh, great question. So 
this works really no. teachers who use our site generally use it like if you're teaching ap they use our site and they use it with ap so i would say it fits really nicely beneath the ap classroom stuff um so the like on this unit five everything up to complete problems these are the, the simpler calculations if you were teaching like an on-level class uh we basically stop i'd stop at about complete problems three um but then if you're teaching an honors class or especially if you're teaching an ap class the challenge and the multiple choice challenge are designed really for ap students the challenge are are kind of on the level of an AP free response question, but they're more mathematical because our, our system lends itself better to mathematical type questions. And then the multiple choice challenge, these are available on all the units that align with AP one. And these ones are literally supposed to just be practice for the AP um, multiple choice questions. Um, these I'm really excited about them. I have to give Abby credit. She made she made these. I made the rest of the unit, but she made these ones. Um, they are randomized so like different students will get the same question but they'll get a different image and so it's like the same concepts but they'll have a different it'll have a different answer so all of our multiple choice questions have about at least usually four or more versions and so usually i give these as students like homework and then i give them an assessment i haven't showed you guys the assessment mode but i can show you that in a little bit and i give this question again but on the assessment they'll get a different version of it so uh kind of to back up and just answer the question this fits really nicely with ap questions it kind of like i like how abby said it has like kind of a very low floor so an easy access point kind of for every student and then you can use it to get as hard as you want up to the ap level it's not supposed to take the place of doing like the ap exactly ap style practice problems um but it is uh it is something that a lot of teachers use for AP and have been pretty successful with. If you remind me, shoot me an email. We did a uh, webinar last week where we talked to five AP teachers who use this and exactly how they use it. And I can send you a recording of that if it would be helpful. Uh, and then, and what are free stuff versus paid? Yes. So on both of our courses, uh, we haven't actually finalized this, but it's basically going to be the first five units are completely free because we want you to try it out with your students. And then beyond that, it requires a subscription. But again, um, and let me show you real quick, like where to find the pricing. Uh, you can find the pricing on the home page, clicking on grab a quote. And so the most common is one teacher and unlimited students for $399. But that's only if your school is paying. If you ask your school and they, for whatever reason, decline, uh, reach out to me and I'll send you a link that's pay what you can and you get to choose whatever price. Like we really do want this to help as many people as possible. Um, Corey said, can you select the questions or number of questions you use within a topic? Yep. Um, yeah. So. The first thing is like I've created, I, sh I should show you some logistical stuff in just so in just a second, but let me answer these questions uh, first. So yeah, the so first, if you want to get rid of an entire lesson, that's easy. You do it from the dashboard. You just click on here and click on remove, and that'll get rid of the lesson for your for your students. If there's a specific question that you don't like, um, so let's say you're on complete problems one. Actually, did this in, on one of these. I think I showed somebody else, and you're like, "Oh, I don't like question one, but I like questions two and three. There's a little remove problem button right here, and then you can remove it, and you can remove it like just for specific sections of students. So now my second, third, and fourth sections they're going to do that problem, but my first section isn't. Or you can do um the like this for section two this means like okay it's going to be on my students homework and in their extra practice mode but I, which i haven't showed you yet but um it's not on wouldn't show up on their assessment and yeah let me definitely show you the assessment in just a second all right deb asked how developed is the physical science um content yeah so what we did is we took the um actually abby do you want to answer that one you're a physical science person Sure, yeah. Um, so we just took a, a standard physical science curriculum and kind of pulled 
from our existing physics and chemistry uh, to like put that into one course. So that covers what most like first year of high school physical science course would cover like all in one place. So that's kind of handy um, for you to use. But am I right in saying, Jack, that if you wanted to use that, but there was something that wasn't on there from other courses, could you have students go and use something from that from there as well? Or could they only use the physical science course? Yeah, great question. Um, yeah, so if a when you, if a teacher has an account, so if I go back to the dashboard on my account, um, every teacher has full access um, to all of the uh, of all of the courses. So if you create an account, you have and like so some teachers teach physics and teach chemistry, they have access to both of those. Um, so yeah, you so if there was something on the physical science side that you're like, oh, I want them to get more in depth in this, then you could have your students go into the physics or the chemistry courses and complete their uh, and like do any of the assignments from there. Um, there, before I forget, there was a question about, um, can you differentiate for individual students? So currently all the differentiation is done by section, but um, what teachers have, tend to do and what I did with my students was after my students signed up, and I'll show you that process in just a second, I would open up another section that was like just for my IEP students. And then I would decrease the amount of work that was required, or I had like a couple different like levels, but basically I'd open up different sections and then just move a few students into those sections. I actually didn't even know I had moved them because the students don't see that from what section they're in from their side. And then I would decrease the, uh, I, I would make different um, assignments for them, usually shorter. Rosa, did that answer your question? Cool. Um, yeah, then let me, while there's a break in questions, let me go ahead and show you just some things on the logistical side. So um, just how to create, how do you add students? Can you download from Google or other? Uh, so yes, I'm going to show you that right now. Hopefully in about the next week or so, we've been working on the on LMS integration is our is our big next step. So the first one we're working on is Google Classroom. And at the minimum, by the start of next school year, you'll be able to pull your students in from Google. Um, Canvas and Schoology are after that. Um, even before that, though, we'll be uh, make a really easy way for you to transfer grades over. Um, we're working on this tool that just lets you copy grades and just automatically paste them into whatever system you use. And then we'll start specifically focusing on Google Classroom, Canvas, and Schoology, and maybe some others. Um, but yeah, let me show you the process for creating an account. So again, you can go to positive physics or positive chemistry or positive STEM, and then you'll click on create an account. And then click on I'm a student, or sorry, I'm a teacher. And then you'll fill out all of these. The one to pay attention to is the class code. So the class code is what we use to link a student account with their teacher's account. So just think of something that's easy for your students to type in and spell correctly. Um, and when they're signing up for the first time, they'll need to type in that class code to link um, their account with yours. But besides that, it's pretty, uh, pretty standard. Um, so then yeah, that is the way the teacher registers. Do you have sample teacher pacing on how many units or assignments they require for you? Let me get to that in just a second. Let me show the show the registration process first. Um, all right, so after you've created an account, you'll land on the dashboard. And then the first thing that I would do, like after you explore, if you decide you wanna add students, uh, go to settings. By the way, this is all gone over in this directions tab over here. But you'll go to settings. By default, only your first period will be activated. So just make sure that you, and you can type in the names if you want, like P1 physics or something like that. Um, you can type in any names you want that'll make it easy for students to join those class. You can activate the class periods that you teach. Don't worry too much about basic, standard, or active. I do active for honors or AP, standard for on grade level, basic um, kind of for below grade level. And the only difference there, let me duplicate this and so I can show you the dashboard. 
The only difference between those levels is that like if you choose one of the lower levels, we'll make the last skills bonus by default, but you can change that anytime and you can click on these to make different settings. All right, um, back to the settings. Then if you teach physics or physical science, we have a few different notations that you can use. So you just wanna pick that before your students join. The standard one is vector magnitude. Um, then choose your value for gravity. All the answers have a 2.5% tolerance. So 9.8 or 9.81 doesn't really matter. I can show you what happens when students are off by a little bit on their answers. Um, and then choose the default course. What this mean in the default unit? This just is when a student logs in. So right now, if a student was in my period two, they would land on physics unit five. And if a student was in period three, when they first log in, they'll land on chemistry uh, unit zero. And you just want to have that set in. You just want to make sure this is set up before you have any students join, because now I'll show you um, what it looks like when a student joins. So. Um, before we have the Google stuff ready, this is how a student joins. They'll click on create an account. They'll say, I'm a student or learner. They'll say, yes, my teacher uses this site. And they'll put in that class code that I talked about. And they'll click validate class code. And then you'll see all the sections that you chose. Those will show up right here. So they can choose which section that they're in. If they choose the wrong one, you can fix it later. And then they'll put in, just keep in mind, we only store a student's username and password because of privacy stuff we don't want. We want as little data about students as, as possible so that everybody can use it. If your school allows it, I highly recommend you have your students join with their last name and first initial, um, and then make sure they write down their password so that um, when they join, like, because we don't have their email address, and so we can't reset their password for them. You can from your manage roster screen, but um, but but we can't. Uh, Corey asked, what is the, yeah, there's a, there's a discount if you get more than one teacher. Um, again, if you just go to the homepage and then just click on, uh, grab a quote and you can, you can change the number of teachers and the number of years that you want. We have some discounts. Don't tell anybody, but I'm going to extend this discount because there are some schools who've said, oh, we can't get it until August. So don't, don't, you don't need to rush and get in by the end of this week. Um, all right, Kelly said, I had a long number as my class code last year. Can I change that to a different word? Yeah, Kelly, I think there was a, <laughs> we had an activation code was different than class code, but a lot of people got that. If you go to the settings uh, and you scroll down to the bottom, there's, it says change class code. And so you can change that to whatever you want from right there. All right. Oh, there was a question that I said I was going to answer later. And then I forgot. Oh, yeah. Um, do you have sample teacher pacing for how many units or assignments they require per unit? Um, <laughs> we, ha we have not made a pacing guide. I find everybody like uses things so differently, but maybe we will at some point. But for right now, I can just tell you that for me, every unit took 1.5 to two weeks. I did. I had my students complete this whole dashboard. If they were honors or AP, they completed the challenge ones too. If they were standard, they completed basically through the complete problems, but not the challenge. I teach one to two of these lessons per day, basically just going down the dashboard. And so with doing an inquiry at the start and doing a lab at the end, we'll have su suggested labs at one point and then doing the assessment, which I realize I haven't shown. Um, that'll take a week and a half to two weeks. But my my philosophy has always been move slower, do things more in depth, make sure don't skip doing labs. And I'd rather I was I was lucky I didn't have a state test in Tennessee. So I would rather get through fewer things, but do them really well than uh, try to get through tons of things. Um, oh, yeah. And then, Abby, thank you for the reminder. One other thing that is new this year is we added this feature right here. Um, this translate feature. So if you have English language learners, we're really excited about it. Um, with one click, they can translate it to about, I don't know, something like 150 different languages. We, if you've ever used like the Google Translate extension, sometimes it's kind of wonky, but we put in, like there are some tags you can add to text about what it'll, what we want it to translate and what it shouldn't translate. 
and we put a lot of time into making sure that the translations are really, really good. Um, if you're using another website, um, like it'll translate N into like, so in Spanish, I'll translate N into Norte which or North, um, but we made sure like we tag that with a do not translate tag um, and made sure like that the translations are really, really good. Um, yeah, and then the other thing I realized I haven't showed you is the different modes. And so I use the work mode for all of my like, basically any, I, I just would tell students to like, okay, this whole unit is going to be due at the, you know, the end of next week or something. Um, and yeah, let me get to uh, Ms. Meta. You can print this. We're actually, we're working on that right now. That should be ready by the end of this week or early next week. I'll show you where it is. And when I talk about the assessments, if I don't, please remind me. Um, but yeah, just kind of how I use this in my classroom, I would just say, hey, uh, unit five is due at the end of next week. And then I'd be like, okay, we're going to go through a couple units per day or a couple, excuse me, lessons per day. I highly recommend staying, um, like doing those each night. You know, some students will leave it all till the end. I didn't, I didn't mark down points for them. I think that's a, an important lesson to learn. But so I just had to enter this one. And again, I only cared about the completion grade. Um, so I just entered that grade at the end of the week and a half or two weeks. And then anywhere where a student had low accuracy, I recommended doing extra practice. So on extra practice, what this will do is it'll randomly select questions from the homework and give them back to the students so they can try it as many times as they want. And you can change the values of how many extra practice questions they get. When students finish the extra practice, they can actually restart it and get a new set of three questions. So they can kind of use this for infinite practice. I didn't use it as a grade. I just used it for literally extra practice. And then we have the assessment mode. So how the assessment works is it randomly pulls questions from the homework. So it feels super fair to the students, but again, it's um, the, the numbers are randomized so they can't just memorize the answers. So uh, it's set up by default. It's gonna grab three questions from the embedded math, three questions from free by diagram drawing, three questions from the next skill, et cetera, and make an assessment that I usually gave my students about 45 minutes to complete. So you'll see this has questions from all of the different skills, getting to the like complete problems at the end. Um, one slight difference here is, all right, let me answer a question correct, and then I'll get something wrong. So here you'll notice that a wrong answer grays out. And then, so a student can't fix it immediately, but when they're done with everything, they can click on finalize. And then they can come back and they can start making corrections. And you'll notice they'll have an original score that once they hit finalize, that original score is locked in and they have a correction score. And that correction score will start increasing as they correct their mistakes and answer anything that they didn't answer before. Um, let's, oh yeah. Uh, you can restart this and give students as many, like if you believe in retakes, you can give them as many retakes as you want. That's from teacher student scores. And again, they'll create a completely new randomized test. So re retakes feel very fair. Some teachers require their, if their students get to 100% on corrections, they'll allow them to do a retake. Um, and then Ms. Meta, the question of it, um, starting probably probably next week or maybe at the end of this week, there'll be a little button right here that says print um, and you will be able to print out an assessment. It'll print it with your numbers on here. Um, you can also print out an answer key for yourself. Um, yeah, and that's coming, that's coming very soon, but it'll show up down here below the check answers bar. Personally, I didn't have much problems with cheating because, let's see, let me hit restart on this assessment. By the way, students won't have a restart or a show answers button. That's just for just for teachers. So what I would do is I just kind of hang out in the back of the classroom. I knew students should not click off those, this page. You'll notice that on an assessment, the top bar turns black instead of blue. 
And so I really just didn't have, have a problem with students cheating on my assessment. They'd have to go to like a different website or something. I could tell if they were doing that from here. Um, looking at a neighbor's screen wouldn't be very helpful because all the problems and all the numbers are different. So I think as long as you keep an eye on it, I really didn't have many problems with uh, with students cheating. And it's so nice that it grades it for you. And so it, it just saves a ton of time so you can actually focus on uh, focus on your students. But if you want to print them out, that option will be available. All right. Um, oh, I think I, I think I'm caught up on on questions. There's some teacher features here that I won't go into in detail unless people really want to. But we said the manage rosters. If a student signs up incorrectly, you need to switch what class they're in or add them to multiple classes. That's new this year. You can do that from manage rosters. We went over settings, student scores. You can see pretty much anything that you'd want about how your students are doing. Um, you see their completion score, their accuracy score. If you want to, this is showing like a summary of their unit. If you want to get into specific skills, you can look at those. Again, completion or accuracy. If you're like, hmm, this student got 50% on this, you can click on that and you can see what your student, that this lighter green indicated they missed it the first time, but then corrected it. So you can see their completion, you can see their accuracy. You can see that they, when they open the skill and when they last answered it. Even in the free version, you can have a class and see their scores. Yes, yep, you can. Um, again, the first uh, five units on the free version. Yeah, the only limitation you have is we we turned off the, uh, the show answers button because some students realized they could create teacher accounts and then use show answers. Although it wasn't that helpful just because all the numbers are different anyways. But yeah, for the... For those first five units, you have completely free access because we think you'll really like it, and then um, you'll you'll what you will wait because we want to help, but also then we know that um, you'll probably want your school to go ahead and get a subscription. And again, if uh, your school can't won't pay for your subscription, you're paying out of pocket. Please don't pay our regular prices. Just uh, email me for the pay what you can link. Uh, Corey said, will the physics fluids and thermo unit be ready for this school year? Are there other units that are lessons coming soon? Yes, physics and fluid. Abby, those are ready. Is that correct? I think the units are, but the lessons aren't. Maybe. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Good question. Yeah. The videos. I don't think we have videos for those just yet. Yeah, let me not promise. We like to under promise and over deliver. So let me not make a promise on those. The um the questions are there and the questions are really good. Um, but there may not be videos on those yet. And then are there other units that yeah, and Abby, we take that. I think we do have uh in addition to the to the chemistry, we were gonna finish up. What were the other ones we were finishing up on physics? Yeah, there are some of the newer physics units don't have videos yet. Um, I think that there's maybe like four or five units, like I think like electro. Got it. So we do have them for that. There's, there's a few units that don't have videos yet because they're new, but they will have them soon. Got it. Um, okay. And, and Brenda asked, thank you so much for asking this. I was going to completely forget, but um. We're super excited about this. It was added towards the end of last year and it keeps getting better and better. Um, we were working on this earlier today, but we have this create questions feature. Um, by the way, if you just want to use this to create questions and just use your own questions with your students, that is completely free. So um, I'll show you, I'll make a, a sample question. So we can say a, a student um, has a mass of, and then this shows you kind of the, the notation below and you can put in a variable. So this is actually how we make, um, how Abby is making all the new chemistry questions. The old ones took a bit more code, but then we made this so we can make questions faster and then you can make questions as well. So then you can 
our notation is if you want to put a, in a random number, you put a minimum value, a maximum value, and a number of sig figs. So you'll see that'll show up right there. If I hit reset, it's a randomized value. And I'll just make it really simple and I'll say, uh, what is the student's weight? And then you could put in an answer and say, okay, the answer is going to be M times 9.8. And then over on the right side, you'll have a, you have this randomized question. Uh, right now, your, your created courses are kind of have to be completely separate from ours, but you can actually, if you, if you have a subscription, you can pull in our questions, but if you don't have a subscription, you'll just create your own, like you can create your own, create your own course. And again, using that is, is completely free, but you'll just go to the create courses, um, units and skills, and then insert questions. Quick plug, if you have a math teacher or any other teacher that um, wants to use the site just to fully, just with the intention of just creating their own things, uh, please encourage them to use to do so. I point them to positive STEM just so they don't feel confused that they're a math teacher and they're on a physics or a chemistry site. Um, there's some other really cool stuff on here, like you can put in a plot and create a randomized graph. Um, so yeah, right now I define this variable M. So let's see, I could do like M times uh, X or something and have a line with a slope of, of 58. Um, you can put in a bar chart and we, we're really big on randomizing things. So everything can be randomized. If you want it to look like ours, we usually do a column break. So we have like the words on the left-hand side, diagrams on the right. You can upload an image or a video to go in. You can create a lesson that goes before your questions. Um, there's, there are a million things that you can do with your creator. So Abby, <laughs> Abby has gotten really, really good and has made some amazing stuff. She uses this to actually randomize words and things. Um, how questions, how are questions created on my own can be organized and saved for future use? Good question. Um, yeah, so if you go in here, um, we usually use a naming convention that we're like, like unit dash, unit name and then dash problem name. Um, you can always rename them. But just to make it easy for you to see, like we have this like just list of all your questions. We have, I think, 10,000 questions now. So if we want to find a question, you can search for it. So like as you start searching for it, it'll it'll sort them, sort them out. If you want your students actually to be able to use those, I want I don't want to go too deep into the weeds here, but you can use this to add a course, add a unit and then add a, add a skill or lesson. And then you'll do insert questions to, to put your questions into the skill that you just added. You can use this to insert our, our questions. But again, that one, if you're going to use our stuff, it, uh, you do need a subscription for that. But on, for all of that, there are these two videos at the top of the create questions that show you kind of in more detail how to do um, how to do all of those things. All right. Um, any other questions? If we create questions, can we put them in a pool for other teachers to use? Yeah. So right now I have to do I have to do a lot of that manually. Um, there is a way to do that. If you want to share your course with another teacher at your school, uh, email me and I can do that for you. Generally, we're just doing that for people who have a subscription. Otherwise, it's uh, pretty it's pretty overwhelming for me. But anything like that, just shoot me an email. Remember my email. You probably, uh, I'm not sure if you have my email, but if you don't, on the homepage of any of our URLs, it says, please reach out to jack at positivephysics.org anytime. I'm always here to help. And yeah, I always try to get back to you super quick, usually much less than... Uh, less than 24 hours. But yeah, long story short, Rosa, the answer to that is yes. Just, um, yeah, just, you just have to let me know. Great. Um, I created a, a just super quick survey. If you guys have, um, 
if you guys have any feedback. Um, Abby, do you have the, the URL for that? Or I can grab it if you don't. Yep, I'll just pop that in now. Uh, it's a it's a one it's a well I guess three question survey just your name and your email and um, if you had if you had any feedback uh, I'd I'd love to hear it I'm happy to hang out for a bit longer um, if anyone has any questions but if you got to take off thank you so much for for joining us I I really really appreciate it and yeah please please give it a try with your students or give it a try, poke around. Again, those first units are completely free. A lot of the stuff is completely free. Um, and yeah, we'd love to have, have you try it out. And again, um, just reach out to me if you want to use it with your students and your school won't pay for it. Just let me know and I'll shoot you that, uh, that pay what you can link. Oh, Allison says, how long before the environmental is complete? Yeah. So the environmental is going to be ready for the start of this next school year. We have, I don't know if you've interacted at all with Chelsea, but Chelsea is awesome. Um, and she is going to have that ready to go for the start of the school year. Right now, if you look at the environmental stuff, you'll notice that we basically just have an outline of all the units. Um, so like most of them are just one question each. That just shows you what the questions will be like. And then we're gonna come back before the school year starts and. Uh, duplicate or yeah, multiply those all out. So there's plenty of practice for, uh, for your students. All right, thanks again, everyone. I'm gonna stay on for just a second so that people can still click on the survey, survey link. Uh, oh, very last thing. If you do get really into our create your own questions piece, that's actually how we ended up getting Chelsea to create our environmental science and our person to create our engineering, John. So if you become an epic creator, you might hear from me about uh, seeing if you wanted to create a public course. All right, thanks, Abby, and thanks again, everyone. I'm gonna go ahead and close this part down and I'll send out a recording to everyone who signed up for this in case you need it later. All right, thanks again, bye. Bye.